Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Dragon Age Origins. Last we left off, we just finished in the Brazilian forest. And so welcome to set 9, where we will eventually proceed on to Orzammar. Now, you may notice that uh, there's been some equipment changes since the last video. Um, that will be because I have gone through and actually looked at everything that I've got and rearranged a few pieces of equipment. Charlotte, of course, is still in the Underworld armor. Um, I did replace her other ring with the Dusk Ring. I think she benefits both from her the Dexterity and Cunning bonus. Alistair being one of the most noticeable changes, he is wearing the uh, Ivory Tower armor, which is a mod. And I've been holding on to it all of this time and have decided to finally implement it. Especially because we are closing in towards the latter half of the game. You may notice that it is designed, uh, modeled after the Templar armor, but this was originally supposed to be exclusively for Arcane Warriors. However, another mod takes away that restriction, so that Alistair can wear it. Because he looks stunning in it. Um, has some tremendously awesome stats. I also did give him a new sword, and I actually started enchanting some of the weapons. When she's in a slightly different robe. I found it in the, uh, Elven Camp, the Elven Enchanter robes. Uh, again, part of a mod, changed out a few things, uh, gave her some different equipment, gave her some different rings. Morgan, same setup as before. Liliana, obviously she is now wearing different armor. And, yeah, it's the Royal Commander outfit. Surat the puppy, I gave the cat to the Lady of the Skies and the Steel Spiked Collar. Sten. I have decided to put the Juggernaut armor on. He just looks badass in it. And I finally put Usaris on him, properly equipping him. Unfortunately, by this point, I started to run out of the rings to uh, actually put on my companions. And Zevrin, I finally gave a freaking weapon. He's now bearing Oathkeeper and the Beastman's Dagger that we found in Hanleith. I haven't changed out his armor, and I haven't really changed too much of uh, what he's wearing, although he is wearing the Harvest Festival ring. And Shale, there's really not much you can adjust there. So, I know that was a little bit, perhaps a bit tedious, but since the question does come up, where does this armor, what, you know, what is this armor, where did it come from, just wanted to give a bit of a rundown. And, before we proceed on, uh, before we proceed on to Orzammar, we need to do our regular converse with companions. Let's start with you know who. Your desire is my command. Let's see, I have some quest or oh. Hmm. I'd like to discuss something private. Well, we're in camp. Now's as good a time as any to talk, right? I need to tell you how much I enjoy your company. You know I was just thinking the same thing. Given the circumstances, things could have been so much worse. I'm so grateful that you're you, instead of some other great warden. Mm, that sounded better in my head. I, I just mean to say that I've really come to care about you. I feel the same way. Now we just need to be rid of that pesky archdemon and everything will be back to normal, right? <laughs> so you hope. So you hope. Your desire is uh, continuing well, on with privacy. We're in camp. Now's as good a time as any to talk, right? And heck, it's been long enough. Oh, <laughs> you want to right now? Well, who am I to refuse? This is another mod. One where she puts her arm through his shoulder. But yes, actually showing off the kiss instead of some jumbled mess of limbs and such. Anyway, so we started off with him. I don't think that Sten has anything useful to add right now. You called. Your face twitched. I have a question. I am hardly surprised. Never mind. Very well. Go. Yeah. As you wish. Well, let's go. 
Nothing interesting there. Although Wynne, Wynne should have something quite interesting to say, because we did finish her personal quest. Thank you so much. This is about Anaren, I assume. Yes. You led me to Anaren. You persisted, even though I was sure all you were going to find was a dead end. It always feels good to get resolution. I will never be able to repay you for what you've done for me. Finding an errand allowed me to bring that chapter of my life to a close. I feel free. A great weight has been lifted off my heart. This moment, it feels like the moment before the sunrise, when all the world is still, holding its breath, waiting for first light. I can stop thinking about my past and look forward to the future. Always have my gratitude. She approves plus 20. Yeah, we have finished her personal quest. And where does that put her approval anyway? Oh, she's at 95. What's on your mind? Never mind. It is no trouble. Okay. So, we have finished that. And let's see. Zephyr, actually, I think... Now that we've finished with the Brazilian Forest. Can I answer some questions? All right, but I get to stare at you luridly while you do so. So, tell me more about your adventures. Again? Well, now, what might interest you, I wonder? Shall I describe the stages involved with Lanthrax poisoning? I watched a man go through all seven months. <laughs> that sounds like fun. Ha <laughs> ha, you have rather macabre tastes, I see. I like that. Let's see, how about the largest battle I ever took part in? That would have been the slaughter of Prince Azrin. Did you hear of that down in these parts? You killed a prince? Me? Not personally, but I did take part in the attack. Prince Azrin was fourth in line to the throne, you see. He started off as 11th, but worked his way up the old-fashioned method by inheriting control of an entire Grosselle from his grandfather. After assassinating his way through the royal family, the king hired three other cells to take down Prince Azrin once and for all. I was in one of those cells. So this was a very big deal. And even royalty is very much bound up in the crows. You wouldn't want it run by a bunch of commoners after all, would you? This means they get involved in politics quite often. This particular fight nearly bankrupted the nation, I understand. It almost ended up putting a crow on the throne, a commoner. But that's a whole different story. I played a very small part. What did you do? My part in the entire battle was taken up trying to reach Princess Verina, who had thrown in with her brother. I killed about 11 of her guards personally before I got knocked out of the window. I landed in the river and nearly drowned. I was fished out by some urchins who robbed me blind. Made off with my boots, too. At least they didn't cut my throat. And that was my part in history. You're very lucky indeed. <laughs> it's true. I live a charmed life. One of the prostitutes that raised me was a fortune teller. Said I wouldn't die young. She was rather startled by that. But there you go. Tale told. Let's be off before I tell more embarrassing stories, huh? <laughs> Can't answer some more questions. All right, but I get to stare at you luridly while you do so. Hmm. Tell me more about your adventures. Well, the only one that's really worth telling is the story of the mission right before I came to Ferelden. But, no, I, I would rather not. I, I shouldn't have said anything. That's all right. I understand. Thank you. Perhaps another day, huh? I think that means he just passed above the 50 mark. No, that's then. Oh, plus, just got above the 26 mark, the 25 mark. Right, okay. I've a question, if I may. Go ahead. Well, here's the thing. I swore an oath to serve you, yes? And I understand the quest you're on, and this is all very fine and well. 
My question pertains to what you intend to do with me once this business is over with, as a point of curiosity. Is this after I ravish you in celebration? Of course it is afterwards. The ravishing part is a given. One simply assumes that once your Grey Warden business is finished, you would have no need of an assassin to follow you about. Am I wrong? <laughs> I could always use a friend. Oh, not more than friends? We all have to see, won't we? Indeed we shall. It is good to know what my options might be, but that is for another time. For now, we have much to do, yes? Papers plus eight. Just knowing that he might be accepted somewhere. Hmm. Can I answer some questions? All right, but I get to stare at you luridly while you do so. As you always do. Tell me a little about Antiva. Oh, you wish to know about Antiva, do you? The only way to truly appreciate it would be to go there. It is a warm place, not cold and harsh like this Ferelden. In Antiva it rains often, but the flowers are always in bloom, or so the same goes. You don't like Ferelden? It is fine enough with its dogs and its mud. The people are spirited, even if they can't tell the difference between an assassin and a mere killer. I hail from the glorious Antiva city, home to the royal palace. It is a glittering gem amidst the sand, my Antiva city. Do you come from someplace comparable? Of course. My mother was better than any gem. <laughs> you have me there, indeed. I, for one, can make no such claim, as I never laid eyes on the woman. Hmm. You know what is most odd? We speak of my homeland, and for all its wine, and its dark-haired beauties, and the lilo flutes of the minstrels, I miss the leather the most. This I have to hear. I mean the smell. For years, I lived in a tiny apartment near Antiva City's leather-making district, in a building where the crows stored their youngest recruits, packed in like crates. I grew accustomed to the stench, even though the humans complained of it constantly. To this day, the smell of fresh leather is what reminds me most of home, more than anything else. You sound like you've been away from home forever. Oh, not so long, I know. It is my first time away from Antiva, however, and the thought of never returning makes me think of it constantly. Before I left, I was tempted to spend what little coin I possessed on leather boots I spotted in the store window. Finest Antivan leather. Perfect craftsmanship. Ah, but I was a fool to leave them. I thought, ah, Zevran, you can buy them when you return as a reward for a job well done. More the fool I, no? <laughs> no Antivan boots for you. No. Um, your home is still there, Zevran. True, and it's a comforting thought. One simply never knows what is to come next. How could I have suspected I would end up defeated by a beautiful Grey Warden? A woman who then spares my life? I could not. Hmm. Beautiful, is it? I say you are beautiful because it is true. Should I not? No, by all means. And glad I am to hear it. Now, if it is all the same to you, I would prefer not to speak more about Tiba. It makes me wistful and hungry for a proper meal. Can't blame me there. So, he's just been boosted quite a bit up in terms of his, uh, approval. Let's see. Yep, he's at 40. And he's at interested. Hmm. But I'm afraid I'm going to have to leave off on that note and continue talking with him next time on Let's Play Dragon Age Origins. Hope to see you then, folks.